Okay, good morning children. Today we are moving towards to chapter number 7 that is location, extent and physical features. Okay, in the previous class I had already explained you uh, certain points like I had already explained you location and extent, the people. So today we will most probably focus on physical features of India. Okay, before that uh, I just want to tell you one thing is that as you all know India is a land of unity in diversity. Unity in diversity means, uh, diversity you know very well, unity in diversity means oneness in varieties. As you know very well, India is a land of collection, okay, different uh, climatic uh, features are there, different type of race, creeds, colors, different languages are spoken in India, people uh, following different religions, okay. Not only that, even we have got different physical features. Okay, got it. So about that, we are going to learn in this uh, today's chapter. When I told you about the location and extent, I already explained to you that the, the latitudinal extent of India, it extends from 8 degree 4 minutes north and 37 degree 6 minutes north. The longitudinal extent, extent of India is from 68 degree 7 minute east to 97 degree 25 minute east. Now, <coughs> Today we'll just move towards to physical features, okay? Physical features of India, okay? As we live in India, we should know each and every point, each and everything about India, of our country. Okay, India is a, a, a country where a major part of South Asia is occupied by India. More part of South Asia is occupied by India. That is something around 73.4% of the area. Okay. Something around 73.4% of area of South Asia is occupied by India. Got it? Now, one thing you should remember is that India has its borders in the north with China, Nepal and Bhutan. In the east, India has a common border with Bangladesh and Myanmar. And if you move towards the west, India has a border with Pakistan. Now, as you know, like for example, let me just uh, draw the half part of India, okay? Now, I will tell you in the north, okay, in the northern part of India, it says its border with China, Nepal and Bhutan. If you move towards the eastern part, in this part of India, it has a common border with Bangladesh and Myanmar. If you move towards to the West India, here you have, uh, India had a border with Pakistan. And one thing you should know that India is surrounded by water bodies on three sides. Okay, let's see, which are the most important water bodies. First and foremost thing I'll write out here, this is Bay of Bengal. Got it? Here we have Arabian Sea and here we have Indian Ocean. Got it? Okay. So, India is surrounded by water bodies on three sides. In one hand side, Bay of Bengal. In the southern part, Indian Ocean and here we have Arabian Sea. In the south of the Indian Ocean and in the and the southwest by the Arabian Sea, which I have told you, it is surrounded by Bay of Bengal. Yeah, that is in the southeast. In the south, Indian Ocean. And in the southwest, we have the Arabian Sea. Now, the Indian subcontinent has been, has five clearly defined physiographic, physical features. Five physical features, physiographic divisions you can find in India. Okay. Namely, let me tell you, number one, okay, number one, that is the northern mountain wall. Got it? Number two, the plains of northern India. Got it? Point number three. The peninsular 
plateau. Point number four, the coastal plains. And point number five, the islands. Okay. Now, if you move towards the northern part, here, okay. Okay, here we have got northern mountain wall. Northern mountain wall, is it clear? Just, let's say, this is the northern mountain wall. Okay, just below that, we have a great plain out here. Okay, this is known as northern plains. Okay, below that, this, this area, can you see? The area, the land which is surrounded by water on three sides. This is what you call peninsula. Peninsula is a land which is surrounded by water body on three sides. So, this is we call as a peninsular plateau. Next point, the coastal plains. Can you see this part? This part. This part is known as coastal plains okay and as you know very well certain islands you can find out here this is known as andaman and nicobar islands and southern islands you can find in this part this is known as luxor deep island is it clear so these are the most important physical divisions which we have in India. Northern mountain wall, northern plains, peninsula plateau, the coastal plains, and the islands. Okay, now, dear children, first and foremost thing, I'll explain you about the northern mountain wall. Just focus out here. Okay. Just focus in this part. Northern mountain wall. Is it clear? Okay. The northern mountain wall is known as the Himalayan Rains. This northern mountain wall can also be called as Himalayan Rains. The Himalayas consist of three parallel rains. It consists of three parallel rains. Is it clear? Now, number one, we call as a Himadri. You don't say top kosa. This is known as Himadri. Okay. It is known as Himadri. Why? Why we call this part as Himadri? Because this remain covered with snow throughout the year. Since year mountain rains are the Himadri we call it. We call as a great Himalayas also. We call as an inner Himalayas also. So this we call as a Himadri because this is a region which is covered with snow throughout the year. The other name given for the Himadri are the Great Himalayas or the Inner Himalayas. It forms the northernmost part of the Himalayan range. See, I had already drawn out here. The northernmost part of the Himalayan range is known as Himadri. And here you can find the world's highest mountain range. So this Himadri is considered as the world's highest mountain range. Now, let us see in this range. Okay, just focus on Himadri. Okay, for a time being, just focus on Himadri. Now, in this range, you can find the world's highest mountain peak, that is Mount Everest, 8,848 meters, 29,029 feet. Don't get confused out here, okay? The world's highest mountain peak, Mount Everest, 8,848 meters, 29,029 feet. Thereafter, even the world's second highest peak, even the world's second highest peak, which we call Mount K2, or can be called as Godwin Austin. Don't get confused. Mount K2 and Mount Godwin Austin is same. It's, it's clear? Got it? The height of Mount Ketu is 8,611 meters. 8,611 meters and 28,251 feet. Got it? 
So, in this range, in this mountain range, in this Himalayan range called Himadri, you can find the world's highest peak, Mount Everest. The world's second highest peak, Mount Godwin Austin or K2, it's located out here only. And even you can find the world's other highest peak, like for example, Makalu, 8,481 meters. Mansalu, 8,156 meter, Annapurna, 8,078 meter, all in Nepal. Mount Everest, Mount Ketu, Makalu, Mansalu, Annapurna, this all falls in Nepal. Even you can find the other peak called as Nanga Parbat, 8,126 meter, and Kanchanjanga, 8,598 meter in India. You know very well, Kanchanjanga is the highest mountain peak in India. India ko highest mountain peak che Kanchanjanga ho, which measures 8,598 meters. So this mountain peak also you can find in this range called Himadri. In this range, you can even find some of the passes. Okay, you can find some of the passes in Kashmir. Passes means a small way or narrow path between the two mountain ranges. Okay, a small path, a narrow path between the two mountain ranges. Even in Kashmir, even in Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Sikkim, you can find this pass. Let's see, in Kashmir, it is known as Karakoram Pass. Baralapchala and Shipkilala in Himachal Pradesh. Thagala and Niti in Uttarakhand. Okay, Nathula, we call it that is in Sikkim. So these important passes, these most important passes you can find in this range, in Himadri. To the north of Himalayan range lies the plateau of Tibet. plateau, sir. The world's highest plateau, one, sir, which is known as the plateau of Tibet. Is it clear? Plateau we call as a table land also, okay, because its shape is similar like a table, okay. It rises high up and flat at the top. Yes, one, sir, plateau. Like, for example, this way it goes up, yeah, yeah, stones. Is it clear? This is called plateau. So the world's highest plateau, the plateau of Tibet. Okay, you can find it this range. And it lies in the rain shadow area of the Himalayas. Okay, let me explain you this, okay, about the rain shadow areas. What do you mean by rain shadow areas then? Rain shadow area means the area which is facing towards to the windward side and which will be receiving more rainfall. Windward side, leeward side, bancha. Windward side, la rain shadow area, bancha. We call it as a rain shadow area. Like for example, okay, the wind moves from here above, okay. As you know very well, the wind cannot pass through it because here it has been obstructed by the mountain range, Himalayas. Okay, got it. The slope of the hills. So the winds are forced to move upwards. Finally, when they reach towards the highest point, they form. Uh, a cloud out here, okay, when it reaches towards to the saturated point, the cloud cannot hold any more of water and the rain has been fall in this area, okay. They throw the rain in this area. So this area is known as rain, sorry, windward side, windward side. You area like Mansu, leeward side or rain shadow area that means rain shadow area means the area which will uh, receive very very low rainfall or let's say which will not receive any rainfall tell them it's a rain shadow area so this part is known as rain shadow area this part is known as windward area in let's say your bag let's say this part will receive rainfall is that clear got it so it has been said that this highest plateau in the world that is known as the plateau of Tibet lies in the rain shadow area of the Himalayas. Now, even from this Himadri, a number of glaciers, a number of glaciers will start from the Himadri. Glacier Manikyo, it is a river of snow. Is that clear? Are you understanding? So, this glacier starts from Himadri to name a few like Gangotri Glacier and Yamanotri Glacier. These glaciers will give a rise to rivers, try to understand. These glaciers will give a rise to rivers. To name some few glaciers which descend from Himadri, that is Gangotri Glacier and Yamanotri Glacier. These glaciers lies in Uttarakhand. Now, these glaciers are the perennial source of water. Perennial source means which will 
continuously supply water like for example Gangotri glacier will permanently supply water for the river Ganga and Yamuna 3 glacier will permanently supply water for river Yamuna is it clear so Gangotri glacier supplies water it gives water towards to the river Ganga so you can say Gangotri glacier is a source of water for the river Ganga and Yamuna 3 glacier is a source of water for river Yamuna and the other rivers which originate from here the other rivers which originate from this range, which is known as Himadri, are River Sharda, River Ghagra, River Koshi, and River Gandak. Is it clear? These are the other rivers which starts or which originates from this range called Himadri range. So, this was all about Himadri. Now, let us move towards to Himachal. Arkoi range, your range. Okay. This range is known as. Himachal. This range is also known as Himachal Himalayas or the middle or let's say Himalayas. Elahami Himachal Pani Monsoksu. This range can be called as the middle Himalayas. It can also be called as lesser Himalayas. Agmali Himadri la Banani. Himadri can be called as greater Himalayas or inner Himalayas. Don't get confused out here. Himachal can also be called as middle Himalayas or lesser Himalayas. It does runs parallel to Himadri. Right? Your Himadri is a Himadri ko parallel. Or it's south of Himadri. A parallel range is there. Is that clear? Their heights range from. Ab esko altitude kati sa. The altitude of this range is something around 3,700 meter to 4,500 meter. Ek jaga 3,700 meter sa in some area something around to 4,500 meter. It has been said that the dunes lies between the Himachal and Shivali. Ab yo. This Shivalik range, last time also, I learned about it is a non continuous range. Okay. So, dunes lies between these two places. Yani, it is a dunes. Okay. Let me explain you clearly what are dunes. Okay. Dear children, listen it carefully for the definition of dunes. Dunes are longitudinal valleys formed as a result of folding when. Eurasian plate and Indian plate collided. Jabba Eurasian plate, Eurasian no, Euro, Europe and Asia plate, and Indian plate. When it met, jabba it collided by you, then these dunes have been formed. Is it clear? It's a longitudinal valley. Try to understand. Don't get confused. Okay. It is a longitudinal valley. Longitudinal valley means the valleys which is in this shape. Is it clear? Something like SQK, U shape, something like a U shape. The bottom are flat. These are dunes. Is it clear? Longitudinal valley. U shape. The flat, the bottom will be flat. Is it clear? I'm talking about dunes. So, these are the longitudinal valleys which are formed as a result of folding. Folding when, like for example, when I press tablecloth, suppose I got my tablecloth, okay. You just from both end, okay, from both sides, you just scramble it. As you press it, the beach ko bhag mati ni sin santa, fold un santa. Same thing happened out here. Is it clear? Like when you press, when you give a pressure from both sides, both sides bore yada tablecloth mani liu, okay. You just experiment, experiment at home, tablecloth rakha, okay. Keep one tablecloth from both sides. You give a pressure, gada kiri beach ko bhag, the middle portion will be lifted high up. The lemons are fold. That is what you call fold. Is it clear? So, formed as a result of folding when Eurasian plate and Indian plate collided. Is it clear? And I told you these dunes are formed between the Himachal and Shivalik. Himachal and Shivalik are beach map form, say your valley dunes, which is a longitudinal valley flat at the bottom. They are flat bottom longitudinal valleys. That is my island explanation. Before the sentence came, I'd already explained you what are dunes. Okay, so it is Yapani Lake Equisa. It is a flat bottom, bottom longitudinal valleys. Dehradun is one such example. So the other example also I'll give you. Dehradun is the example. Okay, Dehradun is the example of dune. Oru example is the Kotli dune and Pathli dune. Kotli dune. K O T L I. Kotli dune and Pathli dune. Only one uh, example has been given in the book. Okay, in your book, only one example has been given of the dune, that is Dehradun Lekheksa. But remember, the other example of dunes are 
कोटली डोन के ओ टी एल आई कोटली एंड पी ए टी एल आई पार्थली कोटली एंड पार्थली डोन आर ऑल्सो द एग्जाम्पल ऑफ डोन is it clear okay this range has a vast fugitive cover ab one thing that has to be noted down you range ma in the range called himachal this range has got a vast vegetative cover yeah vegetation huncha is it clear different varieties of trees can you can find growing in this region so most of the area is been completely covered by the vegetative okay here also you can find a number of peaks yeah pan timale peaks pauncho mountain okay mountain pauncho yeah nira but You can find the peaks which don't have a height more than five thousand fifty meters. Is it clear? Like for example, and these peaks are also. Don't say mountain peaks are yani ra. Okay, these mountain peaks are also completely covered with snow throughout the year. Himachal ma pani don't say mountain peaks theo, which will be completely covered with snow throughout the year. Some of the places which you can find in Himachal region is that Shimla in Himachal Pradesh. With a height of seven thousand twenty-five meters, these ranges range in height from three thousand five hundred meter to six thousand meter. Your range go height between three thousand five hundred meter. They can go six thousand meters. Sama bounce hoti marle. Is it clear? Got it? Okay. The next point. Some of the important ranges you can find out here. Mountain ranges. How you want to? Some of the important ranges in this region are Pir Panjal. Okay. A Pir Panjal kaha sir? Like for example, though I am not so good in drawing, okay, just I am drawing a rough diagram out here. Okay, so let's say this is India, okay. Now here you can find one range. Here you can find one range. This range is known as Pir Panjal. Okay, just above that another range is here. Your range lay on cha, just car range. Take your dear children. You should know all these things, okay? Because it will help you a lot when you'll do. You'll be doing the map work. in the icsc because obviously they will be asking you to uh, mention the ranges also okay got it so this is jaskar range okay yahan din alik mathe yahan euta range cha this range is known as ladakh range is it clear got it and yahan din out je euta range cha this range remember this range is known as karakoram Rains. I am writing uh, name of the some few rains out. Okay, out here. Got it. Okay. Now the Dawladhar rains. Okay, the Dawladhar rains. Uh, the Pir Panjal rains. The Mosuri rains. The Mahabar rains. All in Nepal. Yeah. Okay. Got it. All in Nepal. Nepal the year by the isn't it? Okay. So here you can find out here. The Dawladhar rains form the southernmost rains of the Middle Himalayas. Middle Himalayas ko. I bani suppose Himalayas banana idhu moya ni ra. Okay. Got it? You, the southernmost range of this middle Himalayas. Okay, the southernmost range of uh, this northern Himalayas, uh, especially okay, uh, of this middle Saudi, the southernmost range of this uh, middle Himalayas. Here you can find okay the Dawladhar range. Okay, it forms the southernmost range. The range really attains elevation. Is your range? Because this is your Dawladhar range, sir. The height, the elevations. Of this range is not more than four thousand. Uh, sorry, uh, completely you can find relatively more than four thousand meters. It continues eastward. East was your don't say Dawladhar range, sir. East was continue where it will get merged up with Mahabharat range in Nepal. Your Dawladhar range continues where finally it meets with the Mahabharat range in Nepal. Our Pir Panjal range located in Kashmir. You don't say, sir. Try to understand. This Pir Panjal range located in Kashmir extend from the river Jhelum. Jhelum, you know very well, it is one of the tributary of river Indus. Okay, so this Pir Panjal range, which is located in Kashmir, it extends from river Jhelum to the upper Bis River, something around three hundred kilometer. Jhelum, the kind of Bis summer, co. Is it clear? Are you understanding? From Jhelum to Bis, it extends something around. 300 km this range is separated from the jaskar range by the valley of kashmir 
पीर पंजर रेंज यहाँ सा यो जास कर रेंज यहाँ सा यो दुई चाल के लिए सेपरेट कर सा दिस टू रेंज इस सेपरेटेड बाय यो रेंज लाइन सेपरेट कर सा वैली ऑफ कश्मीर कश्मीर वैली ले सेपरेट कर सा कश्मीर वैली विल सेपरेट पीर पंजर रेंज एंड द जास कर रेंज most of the hill station, see, most of the hill station you can find in this. Is it clear? Got it? In Himachal, okay. Most of the hill station you can find out here. To name few hill station, Shimla, Mushuri, Nainital, Almora, Ranikej, Chakrata, Chal, etc. So, these are very, very important, famous, renowned hill stations of India. The valleys are, uh, yeah, Kungun valleys, sir. Which are the valleys you can find in this Himachal range? I am talking about this range now. Please don't get confused. Yo Himadri vayo. Yo Himachal vayo. Is it clear? I am talking about this Himachal range. Here you can find certain valleys like Kulu Valley, Jammu Valley, and Srinagar Valley. Now, let us come towards to the last range. Your range. L.I. Vancha Siwalik. Siwalik is also called Outer Himalayas. Now, don't get confused. Different names have been given. The question may ask by the different names. Like, for example, instead of Siwalik, they may ask you the question by Outer Himalayas. Okay, got it? So, please don't get confused out here. This Siwalik range is also called as Outer Himalayas. It is not a continuous range. You do it as a continuous range. You continuous range. Discontinuous. Basically, it's a discontinuous range. The slope facing the subcontinent is steep. Now, your slope, which is the face, your slope is the case, steep. Is it clear? The slope which is facing towards the subcontinent is steep, while those are those facing north. Your slope is north face, your slope is this slope is horizontal. That means, you have to note, note it down one thing. The slopes, of this Siwalik range, which is facing towards to subcontinent, in the image of face Gareksa, that area is very, very steep slopes, and the one which is facing to the northern part, it is quite gentle. It is known by different names in different places. Our your Shivalik could different names in different places, like for example, Jammu Hills in Jammu, Miri Abor and Mismi Hills in Arunachal Pradesh. Okay, in different places, it has been known by different names. The average elevation, the average height is something around 1,000 meter above sea level. Esco height. The altitude of this Shiva Lake, the average altitude is something around only 1,000 meter above the sea level. Some of the valleys which fall in this season, I will yap the valley pounceful. See, I told you. Here also you can find valleys. Let's see. What are, which are the valleys which can which you fall in this region? Udampur Valley, Jammu region ma, and the Dune valleys. Is it clear? So these are some of the valleys which you can find in Shivali Krens. Most probably the dunes, okay, uh, it lies between the Himachal and Shivali. Is it clear? Okay. So this was all about the most important thing of the mountain ranges. I told you about the Himadri, the Himachal and the Shivali Krens. Now, let's move and try to understand the other features of the Himalayas. Himalayas ko other features ke ke raisa, okay? Let's try to understand the other features of Himalayas. Number one is dunes. Well, again, I explain ka dekshu dunes. I have already give you, gave you the definition of dunes, okay? But also, let us try to understand, learn something about these dunes. What is this? The dunes were originally temporary lakes formed due to the blockade of the river water coming down above, from above during the uplift of the Himalayas. Hey, dunes are also formed by here. See, actually dunes are what? It is a temporary lakes. Dunes are specially temporary lakes. How it has been formed? Due to the blockade of the river. When the river flow, they say, tell a block. So when the water has been blocked, obviously what will happen? The water gets stagnant. Pani stagnation is the jamma. Is it clear? Got it. So that is how it is a temporary lake. I'm told. I am. I have already told you. It is formed due to the blockade of the river. River water. Jamma river water. Down from above during the uplift of the Himalayas. During the upliftment of the Himalayas, when when the river water was flowing down, the river water got blocked and the dunes were being formed. As the rivers carved out their own courses, these lakes dried up. Thereafter, what happened? 
आपने मेन कोर्स वाले रिवर ले आर को बाटो पकड़ी जा लाइक फॉर एग्जांपल ले से डी रिवर इज़ फ्लोइंग फ्रॉम यर समथिंग ड्यू टू समथिंग या रिवर ब्लॉक बाय यर इट विल नॉट फ्लो दिस वे इज़ इट इट विल कार्व आउट योर रिवर तो बंगेर आर को बाटो जान संता इज़ इट क्लियर सो ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम ये जो जो पानी या ब्लॉक Try to understand, okay? River water raya due to some blockade, yeah, lake form by Now the river ta yeah, near bossi na It has to change its course, I know. Your river change course by change kar aur arga baato goyo, yeah, lake by After some time, the lake got dried up. Bajo, it got dried up. So cute the lake. Thereafter. As you know, well, rivers, when the rivers are flowing, obviously the river carries the boulders and the debris, sand, sand, or dunga, or gitti, or gitti, or balwa, isn't it? it? It brings. So, what happened? The boulders and the debris are, say, you filled up by your, you say, lake, poila form back to you. Is it clear? Can you dry back? So, this has been filled up by the boulders and debris, live, and they turned them into valleys. Then, LIC came and convert Gario, LIC valleys, ma convert Gario. Is it clear? Got it? This was been turned into valleys. Now, these flat valleys lies between the Himachal and Siwalik. Now, you flat valleys say, can't lie on the Yanira. Between the Himachal and Siwalik rains. There are done partly and quota are situated in such flat bottom valleys. So, in this bottom valleys, but again, Namdi Alekte, there are done partly doom, Kotla doom. Okay. So, these are all found out here. So, this is these are the dunes. This is one of the most important feature of the Himalayan. Next important feature, number two, Bhansa Hami, Bhabar areas, B-H-A-B-H-A-R, Bhabar areas, try to understand dear students. Bhabar areas, these are porous, gravel-ridden plains at the foot of the Himalayas. Himalayas ko bottom ma, foot ma. Just say, mo Himalaya bano zu. Himalaya bane bachi, yo bainta, this is the foothills of the Himalayas, okay? This is the foothills of the Himalayas. Got it, dear children? Okay, so, these areas are porous. Porous means where the water can easily go through it. Gravel ridden plains, yo plains e kele barek sa, gravels lake, the gravels which are being brought by the rivers. Is it clear? Got it? Where the Himalayan stream descend onto the plains. So, Himalayan streams, Himalayan bar streams also are it specially descend towards to the plains. Plains where finally either it goes towards to the uh, ocean. Okay, you know very well. Okay. Now, these streams are seen only in the rainy season. Okay, this type of streams can be seen only in the rainy season. This is karan Allahami seasonal streams also. Is it clear? These streams can only be seen in the rainy season. Because what happened in other season, they get lost in the ground due to the high porosity of the surface, due to the high evaporation in the dry season, in the hot season, okay, that rivers completely gets dried up, okay. Like for example, as I've told you, okay, uh, when we are doing the topograph, in topograph, we have got a different type of streams, isn't it? Yes or no? Got it? Uh, so, disappearing stream, Okay, so disappearing streams, you can only find it in the rainy seasons. Okay, whereas in other seasons, it gets disappeared. That's the kind of disappearing streams. So, is it clear? So, these streams are also seen only in the rainy season. In other seasons, they get lo lost in the ground. Or else, remember one thing. Most of the rivers, okay, most of the rivers, when they flow, okay, either they join towards to the sea, finally, ultimately, either to the ocean, or towards to the sea. Okay. But there are some streams which we call disappearing streams. This is in my heart also. It does not enter towards to the ocean also. It does not enter to the sea. You calculate the seasonal rivers I'm talking about. Is that clear? Okay. Now, next is Tarai reason we call it. T-E-R-A-I. Tarai. It is a strange terrain an area consisting of marshy underground sea pairs. See. It's a very big area. It's a vast area. Okay. Which consists of marshy. Marshy means dal dal Wet area. Okay. Underground sea pits. It is clear? Are understanding? So, the upper part of the land, it gets uh, completely wet. 
Nepali mein hami dal dal banju. Marshy lands we call it. It is formed when water from the Bhabar area seep down into the soil and suddenly appear when the flat plains begin. Abi yo tarai se kaise form bago? Try to understand how this tarai region has been formed. When water from the Bhabar areas, yo Bhabar areas okay, I am le pariu. From this Bhabar areas okay, when the water from this Bhabar areas seep down into the soil. Pani jamin bit muni posa. Is it clear? And suddenly ki unsa a flat plain tanner outsa. Tell I bunsa terai land. There's a marshy land unsa wet land we call it. Is it clear? Got it? So it does create a swampy land. Tese kana it is a marshy land. Kine tete bije ko saa jamin onta. Is it clear? Are you understanding? It is a wet land. So this creates a swampy area. The terai region is ill drained and heavily forested. See, in terai region, re re remember one thing. Terai region. Drainage system more than a tanner. There is no any other alternative, any other uh, way from which the water can flow off more than enough. It's not properly drained and it is heavily forested. That's the reason. Terai region, a damn dense forest, one sir. Is it clear? In this terai region, you can find many wild animals like uh, elephants, tigers, rhinoceros, deer, are specially found in this forest. In a dense forest, it's like a deep forest, jungle, one sir. Is it clear? So many wild animals you can find in this area called terai region. Terai areas are more widespread in the eastern regions than in the west. Okay, if you come towards the eastern and the western region, you can find the terai areas being. Quietly widespread, especially in the eastern region, rather than in the west. Why? Because the eastern Himalayas get heavier rainfall than the western Himalayas. You part eastern, you part western. Is that clear? So, when I when uh, let me explain you something about the monsoon out here. Okay, when the southwest monsoon, southwest monsoon here, but now sir. Okay, when the southwest monsoon comes out here, it moves out here. It collects this moisture from Bay of Bengal, and the amount of rainfall has been dropped in this area. By the time they reach to this area, it completely gets dried up. Is it clear? So that is the reason why it has been said that these terai areas more widespreadly you can find in this eastern Himalayas rather than the western Himalayas because the eastern Himalayas receives heavy rainfall comparing to those to the western Himalayas. The terai areas have now been drained. Cultivated and developed for growing sugarcane, wheat, tea, etc. See, be before I told you, Tarai region is ill drained. Okay, there is no proper drainage system in the Tarai areas. It's a swampy land. Pani jamin sa stagnation unsa. There is a stagnation of water. But now the government has taken an initiative in this region. Okay, this region has been well drained up. Now our pani fang day sa is it clear? And that Tarai region has been brought into cultivation. Is it clear? Today you can find certain different uh, cash crops as well as food crops being cultivated in the Tara areas. Some of the crops like sugarcane, wheat, tea, etc., are being grown in the Tara region. Okay. Now I'll be moving towards to the last point. The another important feature that is Khadar and Bhangar ones. Okay. Khadar and Bhangar. Ab yo te kya? What are Khadar and what are Bhangar? New alluvium. Soil which have been brought down by the river. When the river flow on, sir, okay, the river brings alluviums. Okay, along with it, it brings some boulders. Okay, uh, sand, etc. Got it. So the new alluvium brought down by the rivers in low lying zones, which are liable to inundation during flooding and rainy season, is known as khadar. See, the new alluvium soil brought down by the rivers towards to the plain area during the time of flooding. जब वो फ्लड होने सा, during the time of rainy season, the new alluvium is brought down by the river and it has been deposited in the low areas in the plains. इलाहामी बंसो खादर। the old alluvium in the river beds, river beds में, you when you find the old alluvium in the form of terraces found above the flood plain level, इलाहामी बंसो भंगर। is it clear? So above this खादर and भंगर in the later chapter, okay, we'll learn in detail. So dear student, for today, I'm going to stop out here. Thank you.